Okay, we'll, we'll get going so you guys can take off. Uh, I want to thank Jim Cameron and John Hartwell, two leaders in Connecticut Transportation, for being here today. Uh, a report just issued by the Federal Railroad Administration indicates that nearly every railroad in the United States will fail to meet the deadline this year for implementing positive train control. Nearly every railroad will fail to meet the deadline for this life-saving technology that the Federal Railroad Administration itself says could have prevented the deaths of 300 people, 6,700 injuries in 145 accidents over the past several decades. These 300 deaths were preventable by a technology that is affordable and accessible right now, but tragically, our own Metro North is failing to set a definite deadline for adopting it that is unacceptable. Metro North should give us a deadline and a date certain by when we will have this life-saving technology. Riders of this railroad deserve a date certain, a deadline, and discipline if Metro North fails to meet that deadline because this life-saving technology could have prevented the deaths in the Bronx at Spite and Dival could have prevented the deaths and tragedies in Philadelphia, could have prevented 300 deaths over the past several decades. And that's why the failure to meet these deadlines has real consequences. And that failure, whether it's Metro North or any other railroad, should be met by real consequences in fines and penalties. I'm calling on the FRA, the Federal Railroad Administration, to indicate clearly and emphatically that there will be consequences for Metro North as well as other railroads that fail to comply with their legal and moral obligation to implement positive train control, a life-saving technology that's a kind of GPS for trains, slowing them down if they're going too fast, stopping them if they're going to collide with other trains, We've seen too many of these tragedies just over the last few years, and too many deaths and injuries and dollar costs over this past recent time. And that's why uh, I'm calling on both Metro North and the FRA to set deadlines, impose discipline, including penalties, that will be paid by the railroads, not by the commuters or passengers, and not by the state of Connecticut, penalties that will be paid by railroads that either deliberately or negligently fail to implement positive train control. There is no excuse, none. After so many years and after an acknowledgement that this technology is life-saving, realistic, affordable, accessible, no excuse, in failing to implement it. And that's why uh, I, I believe that the FRA and Metro North should be doing their job better. We've known about this technology and there have been calls to implement it since 1969 when a crash in Darien took four lives and could have been prevented by exactly this kind of technology. The crash in Darien in 1969 should have prompted immediate adoption of this technology. We've waited too long, and that's why this very urgent action is necessary now. And I'm going to ask uh, first Jim Cameron and then uh, John Hartwell to say a few words. Thanks, everyone. I'm Jim Cameron. I'm the founder of the Commuter Action Group. I served 19 years on the Metro North Commuter Rail Council, many of them with John. I went back and looked at our minutes from our meeting in September of 2008, 12 days after the Chatworth, California derailment that took 25 lives when a motorman, the engineer of the train, was texting and ran through a red signal and collided with uh, a freight train. 12 days after that incident, we had a meeting of the commuter council and we asked Metro North what was going to be done in terms of implementing uh, positive train control. 
uh, the railroad literally rolled their eyes at us and said that kind of accident could not happen on Metro North. That they had technology in place that would stop somebody from running through a red signal or at least slowing them down. Spoyd and Dival showed that that was not the case. I really salute uh, the Senator for pushing on this issue as hard as he has for uh, many, many months. Uh, this is a public safety issue. Um, 11 of the 41 railroads in this country already have implemented positive train control, including that railroad in California where the accident occurred, including SEPTA, the Southeast Pennsylvania Transit Authority. Now, how could they do it, but Metro North not? I think that Metro North assumed that they were going to have an extension. They didn't get serious about this. And now they're saying that there's not enough time to implement this by the December 31st deadline. Uh, shame on them. They should be held responsible for delaying this technology and endangering the lives of commuters. So thank you, Senator, for your leadership on this issue. Um, first, I'd like to thank Senator Blumenthal for taking this issue on and pressing it again and again. This is a really important issue. Commuters deserve a safe, reliable, and comfortable ride. Safety is number one. It has to be. And positive train control is a critical piece of that. Uh, it's absolutely the case that, that until recently, It's actually the case that until recently, Metro North has not been committed to putting this technology in place. Uh, we believe that the new president of Metro North, uh, Joe Giletti, is working hard on this, but we're now against the clock because the clock is supposed to run out at the end of December, and I'd, uh, we hope that they're going to be able to make that commitment. We have 100,000 people to get on Metro North every day on the main line and ride in. Uh, to Stamford, to Bridgeport, and all the way down to, to Grand Central. Those people deserve this technology. And it is no longer a matter of money. The Federal Railroad Administration has loaned money to the parent of Metro North, the uh, Metropolitan Transit Authority, gave them nearly a billion dollars. And the state of Connecticut also has money to throw into the pot for our part of the line. So the money is there, the need is there, it's time to get it done. And we've been joined by uh, Carl Amanto. I'm going to ask him to say a few words. Uh, I'm the executive director of the South Central Regional Council of Governments. We represent the 15 cities and towns in this region. And of course, so many of uh, those towns depend on the commuters going to New York City and to Stanford. Uh, obviously, this is the most crowded uh, corridor uh, uh, on Metro, uh, on the uh, Amtrak and Metro North, um, Northeast Corridor, and uh, it's so important that people have confidence in their rides and, and uh, that they're going to be safe and that there won't be any disruption to travel because it's catastrophic in terms of the economics of this region. Uh, I applaud uh, Senator Blumenthal. I've stood with him several times here uh, for really taking up this issue and, and making it uh, important really raising it to visibility with the public, just how important this is. Uh, there have been many safety issues in terms of the bridges, in terms of uh, service, so electrification, all of those issues Senator Blumenthal has been front and center on to make sure that people have safe, reliable rides in this important corridor between New York City and New Haven. Thank you, Senator Blumenthal. I, I should emphasize that uh, Jim and John and Carl have stood with me before. Uh, and the point, by the way, that Jim makes is really important. Other railroads are getting it done. Few, but some of them are, and that shows it is doable. Did, Senator, did, did John say a billion dollars has been received by MTA? Yes. We, we successfully... Metro North is receiving $1 billion from the federal government to get this job done, and it's failing to do it by the deadline that is imposed by statute 
and failing also to give a date certain instead of that deadline when in fact it will be implementing positive train control. This system is not a luxury or a convenience. It is a life-saving necessity. The money has been allocated to Metro North, $1 billion, to do this job, and the failure to accomplish it is reprehensible, but even more so, the failure to give a deadline when it will get it done. What has Joe Gilletti said? I'm sure you, you all have uh, made it clear that this is inexcusable when you've already got the money in your kitty. The best way to summarize, I think, his reaction is, number one, he's new. He hasn't presided over all of the time that Metro North had to, to do this job. But I think his essential answer is he's doing his best. They face a lot of challenges. I want to know, OK, you're doing your best. When will your best get this Attention job done? Please be advised that this is the final boarding call for the Metro North train 1557 to Grand Central Terminal. And I might just add, uh, you know, we're very near to West Haven, where Robert Luden lost his life. Positive train control would have saved Robert Luden. He would be alive today if this system had been in place because that train would have been stopped before it hit him. That is a preventable death, a PTC preventable death. He was a Metro North employee. Exactly. And so when we look around this station and on the tracks and we see hardworking Metro North employees or around the country on our railroads, those men and women are at risk because of the failure to implement positive train control. And that is inexcusable. Robert Luden would be alive today, almost certainly with positive train control. What has Ms. Feinberg at the FRA said with regard to fines, and, and will they be serious about implementing some very stiff fines? The report just issued by the FRA sets forth a schedule of fines, but says nothing about how they will be imposed. Right now... Attention customers, please be advised that this is the final boarding call for the Metro North. Right now, the FRA is giving us rhetoric, not a regimen of penalties that will give incentives to these railroads to do the right thing. Let's face it, if these penalties are just the cost of doing business, the railroads will engage in deliberate delay, cost-saving devices, but they need to be told there will be meaningful consequences if there is intentional avoidance of your obligation to implement positive train control. Since the Darien crash in 1969, this technology has been available? This technology has been available in one form or another since the early 1970s. And in fact, it is in an advanced form now that relies on GPS. Think of this system as a kind of GPS for preventing train derailments or collisions or excessive speed or other kinds of crashes and accidents that take lives. And it's been available since the early 1970s. It should have been implemented well before now. And there's no excuse now. Do you guys want to add anything? anything else? John? Um, in Connecticut, we have uh, two operational uh, commuter lines right now, Metro North from here down to Grand Central. We also operate the Shoreline East, which uh, is under Amtrak. Amtrak actually has an early version of positive train control on the piece of track that leads north out of New, out of New Haven. So, so Shoreline East, Shoreline East has, a, has a, a, a version of positive train control, not the most up-to-date one, but certainly one that's, that's uh, workable. Uh, on the Hartford line, which will run from New Haven to Hartford to Springfield, supposed to open in the end of 2016, uh, obviously, positive train control will be part of that process. And for the main line where we're running our new M8 cars, those cars come equipped with um, 
some of the equipment that's necessary already for positive train control. So the, the process of bringing those M8 cars and, the, and our line up to, to speed should be faster than in other parts of the Metro North Territory. So uh, there are some positive things here. We can, we can move relatively quickly on this for the main line. Um, and we need them to do that. We need to have that commitment by Metro North to get the job done. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. I want to. I want to thank Jim and John. Sure. And Thanks, Senator. Appreciate it.